The boys watch the girls while the girls watch the boys who watch the girls go by. I do I. They solemnly convene to make the scene. Which is the name of the game? Watch a guy, watch a dame on any street in town. Primo giorno di Toronto International Film Festival, siamo tutti in fila aspettando la conferenza di Cronenberg. Vedete la conferenza che si chiama The Cronenberg Project. Toronto 38, eccoci alla press conference. The Cronenberg Project. Cruz, che è il moderatore, David Cronenberg, of course, Bill Sandling, il presidente, eh, Noan Korn, uno dei dirigenti. Innovative Friday. Press conference, uh, we've just uh, gone through, so I'll do it again quickly. I'd like to introduce our guests, the two co curators of the Cronenberg Project, Pierce Handling, director and CEO of uh, TIFF. Uh, Noah Cowan, Cohen, the artistic director of TIFF Bell Lighthawks, and our very special guest, filmmaker David Cronenberg. Uh, now, I'll throw things over to Chris. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the opening day of the 38th annual Toronto International Film Festival. It's my pleasure to be able to share with you news of the Cronenberg Project, the most ambitious exhibition ever mounted devoted to the career and films of David Cronenberg. The relationship between Tiff and David goes back more than 30 years. In 1984, we mounted the first comprehensive retrospective of David's work at the festival and published the first book in English on his films. We have opened the festival twice with his films, Dead Ringers and M. Butterfly, and others have played as galas. 20 years ago, we approached David and asked him to donate all his files and memorabilia to Tiff. He agreed, and we have now collected a wealth of material from his films over the years adding to the collection with every new production. The Cronenberg Project, in all its many dimensions, has always been a dream for us. Before we moved into our permanent home here at Tickbell Lighthawks, we knew that the first major original touring exhibition that we would curate from our own collection would be dedicated to David. So it fills me, as I'm sure it does, my colleague and co-curator Noah Cowan, with a deep sense of pride and accomplishment to be where we are today. David is a unique filmmaker. His has always been a singular vision, going right back to his first experimental features. And over the years, as his fame has grown, he has remained remarkably true to his roots. There is a thread of common purpose and intent that joins his last film, Cosmopolis, to his first stereo. His work is provocative and questioning. His speculations on how science and technology affect our minds and bodies have also been remarkably prescient. The core component of which is a major milestone for our organization, the first large-scale exhibition originated by TIFF that will travel internationally. But from November 1st to January 19th, the gallery you're in right now will be transformed once again, this time taking audiences into David's world and Noah will speak to this in detail in a second. Let's just say we've taken the creative and innovative mind of David Cronenberg and brought it together into one very cool space. I'd like to add that we would not have been able to do any of this without our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal, Paris, Visa, and Audi, our major public supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. The Cronenberg Project is made possible through the support of presenting partners, the Government of Canada and the Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund. Actress named Nuala Fitzgerald, who uh, actually doubles as my mother in real life, returned home from work one day telling tall tales of being bludgeoned to death by a midget in a snowsuit spray painted green. <laughs> Um, as a budding fan of all things perverse, I think I was around 11 years old, I was hooked on the idea of movies, creating magic. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I killed his mother, and I apologize. <laughs> I should go on Oprah, really. But... It's given me so much material about David, so thank you. Thank you <laughs> but it really did confirm that, you know, in the movies, anything is possible, even resurrecting your mother. So thank you very much. <laughs> Um, David Cronenberg Evolution traces David's development as a filmmaker and really examines very deeply his approach to the body and mind, to the 
questions of identity, sexual control, the role of science, and the existence of science fiction, what that means. Uh, Pierce and I teased this out in a series of actually kind of wonderful extended discussions, and we organized it to follow in about three loose sections. The first one is called, Who is My Creator? And it reveals David's earliest works from stereo through to um, the critical early work, Videodrome, examining protagonists' search for father figures within the worlds of science and technology. Who Am I, which is the second section, looks at David's period from dead zone to existence as characters seek control of their own identities and divided selves and their experiments with their own bodies. And then finally, Who Are We, which is the third section, takes these protagonists out into the world, examining both their psychological and physical relationship to family, friends, and society, from Spider up to his most recent film, Cosmopolis, although there's one in the can, which we're looking forward to seeing soon. These chapters are presented through costumes, behind-the-scenes footage, photographs, set drawings, and a plentiful supply of mysterious, visionary, and thought-provoking artifacts. You're in luck, because we actually were able to bring one of these objects here for you for a sneak peek. This, uh, I've got a chance to look at it up close, and it's still an eyeful. Yeah, it's an eyeful up close, I will tell you. Um, Pierce, you wrote a book about uh, David un oggetto che inventato da Cronenberg per Naked Lunch. Somebody saying that to you, that's really fantastic. <laughs> and so that was one of the things that ended up <laughs> ultimately. No, I, I, I actually, um, I, I lost track of all of the, you know, we had, I, there's so many things I have. Um, Stefan de Puy, who, who was one of the, he won an Oscar for uh, The Fly, for special effects makeup. Uh, Carol Spear, who's been the production designer on almost all my films. Uh, they, these things have been, they have them, you know, in, in barns and closets and basements and stuff. And I really have not really kept track of anything, so uh, I, I don't recall having that in my garage because it's a very small, one-car garage, there's a lot of junk in it that's not very interesting. I'm very excited to partner with Body Mind Change and contribute to its groundbreaking pod recommendation engine. The promise of pod is nothing less than extraordinary. It represents an unprecedented leap forward in human improvement technology, placing humanity at the threshold of a new evolutionary age. To achieve genuine greatness, we need only step through the door. Physical and intellectual symbiosis with pod will improve your life in unexpected ways. Through a process called synaptic entanglement, pod's personality integrates with your own. A truly unique life form, pod then transmits its intuitive life recommendations to you at the speed of thought. The result? You will unearth previously untapped drives and desires and ignite newfound passions. God helps you pursue a smarter, more purposeful life. It turns you on to new tastes and experiences. Life is now an adventure, and God is your partner. Join us as we make history together. I'm at a point now where my life really is just, I'm just really providing raw material for Lance and Anna. Uh, I don't really have a lot of my own. Um, I'd like to um, introduce you here to my own pod. Um, I, I've named him Frisky. Um, and um, the body mind change will give participants an idea of what it's like to live inside one of my films. Something, of course, you would all be dying to do, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, particularly scanners, a video drum, and existence. In fact, the premise of the story world is that the VMC labs were so inspired by some of my own science fiction that they turned it into scientific fact. This is an exciting thing, of course, the idea that your films, when you're inventing science, that actually should inspire an actual scientific uh, uh, invention. Um, I'm proud to say I'm the first participant in this project, and I look forward to having others join me in creating their very own pods. Um, Frisky is, you know, he's temperamental. Uh, so I'm just going to have to, he, he likes a little water. There you go, you see? Um, he, he looks innocuous. 
Don't be fooled. Um, so it's it's an honor to be here to talk to you about a Cronenberg project, whatever that is. Um, I have a long history with TIFF. We've grown together almost symbiotically, and it seems fitting that uh, David Cronenberg Evolution will be housed here in Toronto, where my personal and professional roots are. Um, and uh, I was able to uh, see the David Cronenberg Transformation Show last night at Loka, and I'm just uh, excited to see the various other uh, components roll out in the fall, as well as uh, um, to contribute additions to the program myself, and including a, sh a new short film, which I plan to be making. Uh, we'll see if I can finish it in time. Um, uh, I've just been finishing another movie called Maps to the Stars, and, and uh, so um, that, that's taken up a little time. It's kind of interfered with my the short film. I also have no trouble delegating responsibilities uh, to others. So, uh, and, and I have been for the last uh, two months shooting, uh, been shooting Maps to the Stars, which is a new movie. And uh, so I've been kind of out of the loop. And, and, and really, when I read the, the final press release, which was, you know, about a five page press release. Uh, outlining everything that was being done here, I was, it was quite overwhelming, honestly. I mean, I don't think I've really grasped the enormity of what these maniacs have done. Um, so I, I, I had no problem, though, with that, because when you make a movie, um, you know, it's, it's yours, it's your, in your control up to a certain point, and then after that, it, it, you let it go, you know. It's like, it, it flies out, it's like having a kid, it is like that, it's a cliché. But, you know, the, your kid becomes an individual creature in the world that interacts with people that you don't know and has experiences that you don't control anymore, and, and, uh, and, and that's what you want. So I don't really have a problem letting it go this way, you know, and to become, um, um, it, it's, it, in a way, it's just uh, another aspect of, of, of having your films affect other people, just generally, and then also influence other filmmakers. I mean, it, it, of course, it's delightful when somebody says that they've been influenced by it. It's, 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 a, it's a huge compliment, you know, that, that somebody's filmmaking, let's say, has been influenced by your own. And, and so I, I must say, it hasn't been, it's just been very pleasant. And, and there's been, uh, I'm sure that as time goes on, and I'm you know, on stage introducing some of my films with some of the people that I've made the films with, which is what's planned in the future, I'm sure that I'll have a lot, you know, there, there will be that emotional journey. It will be difficult for me in a weird way, you know, to talk about the films, because I don't normally like to do it after they've been released. I mean, there comes a point where you've done your last uh, interview about a movie, and then that's it, you know, that's it. Okay. I've had one good screening, everybody seemed to like it. I've had one good interview, that's it. Move on to the next film. Eyes watch, girls walk with tender loving care. It's keeping track of the pack, watching them, watching back that makes the world go round. Watch that sound. 